So, it's finally that time. A moment I think we've all been thinking about since the game was announced. Well, at least I know I have. Today, I've got the best team for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, this one is definitely going to be a bit of an interesting one. Legends Arceus has been an absolute blast to play, and some of the most fun I've had with this series in years. While I do like traditional Pokemon gameplay, Legends Arceus has been just the shakeup we all needed to give us a bit of variety in the main games. With more of a focus on catching than battling, it's just been such a breath of fresh air. But then that brings us to what some of you might find to be a problem. Since trainer battles aren't the norm in the region of Hisui, you might be thinking, how does the best team even really work here? Well, you'll see exactly how throughout the video. However, there are a decent amount of differences compared to normal. I'm still keeping the core of best team here with the team of six Pokemon, the moves for them, and how they stack up against all the important battles you'll face. The main differences here are that I will be talking about more than four moves as available options, and there will be the occasional Pokemon that gets picked up and used for a little bit, until it has a nice replacement. From there, you'll be taking on the occasional trainer, who will usually have only one or two Pokemon, the frenzied noble Pokemon, the epic boss battles, and finally a few trainer battles that have actual teams. One of which that is actually a post-game battle, but one I felt was necessary to talk about here. By the way, this video will obviously have those spoilers, so this is your warning to turn back before I get into the meat of this video. Alright, so with all that situated, I think we can start things off with, well, the starter. So, if you caught my ranking of the Hisui Forms video last week, you'll know that I have a definite idea of what the best starter is. And that's Oshawott. It was arguably the least popular of the three, but that doesn't really change reality. If you stack up the three starters, Samurott offers the most success. It's got 108 base attack, 100 special attack, and 85 speed. Those attack stats allowing for it to put plenty of work in battle. The dark water typing is pretty cool too, even if weaknesses to fighting and fairy rear their ugly heads. I feel like there isn't much more that needs to be talked about with our starter. This is always the shortest part of these best teams anyway. So let's just get into the moves. So the moves we've got on our Samurott today are Ceaseless Edge, Aquatel, Megahorn, and Poison Jab. So, Ceaseless Edge is this new great signature move Samurott has, with 65 base power and 90 accuracy. It causes some decent damage, while also hurting the opponent afterward with residual damage for a few turns. If you're not huge on Ceaseless Edge though, go with Night Slash. It's another dark type move that Samurott will learn upon evolving, and it's even stronger with better accuracy, but minus the residual damage that wins me over. Aqua Tail is the best water move that Samurott has physically, but since it could be a mixed attacker, feel free to use Hydra Pump later on when Samurott hits level 43. Then we've got Megahorn, which is a tutor move, and will be great to deal some major bug type damage. I'd say the other dark types of the world need to fear Samurott big time. Finally, Poison Jab sets out the rest, offering a way to handle fairy types, which is probably the scariest weakness Samurott has. Psycho Cut and Ice Beam are some fine alternate moves, and can really play out well even with the rest of the team, which, spoiler alert, has ice and psychic coverage already. So that's all, and because I'm doing things a little differently with this best team, we're just going to get into the next Pokemon and talk about the battles later. So next up on the team, we have got the wonderful Rose Raid, a favorite of mine to use in Sinnoh back once again as a favorite for Hisui. Rose Raid's strength is unmatched among most grass types you can reasonably find and use in this game, but it is still only available in the Crimson Mirelands, leaving the beginning portion of the game without a grass type. Why not grab a Shinx then, and possibly use that and a Luxio until you can grab Badoo? You'll want something for water types that might get in your way in the wild, and of course it's a pretty decent Pokemon to use early anyway. Its strong physical moves can help break through Gumi and Mai too, and that's definitely important. So when you eventually get Badoo, it'll need to love you a bit and be leveled up into Roselia. And then for Rose Raid, you'll have to get a Shiny Stone. You'll have to spend some time nabbing MP and trading for one probably. 
but maybe you'll find one laying around somewhere after you get Ursa Luna, or perhaps in a time-space distortion. It's all up to you and how you get Rose Raid. But for now, let's take a look at its move pool. We've got Sludge Bomb, Energy Ball, Dazzling Gleam, and Shadow Ball, comprising the move pool on Rose Raid. They're all very easy moves to get on Rose Raid using the move tutoring. Sludge Bomb and Energy Ball are a duo of very nice stab moves, and Petal Dance can even be learned at level 52, so a pretty massive grass type move in the late game can make an appearance. Dazzling Gleam and Shadow Ball provide some good coverage too. And did I mention this fantastic fact? All four of these moves can be put on your Badoo by tutoring, so this little bud is bringing the smoke from the moment you get it. Those are the moves you want on a Rose Raid, no doubt about it. So we'll just move on to the next Pokemon on the team. Let's go with the best he swing and form out there, the incomparable Gudra up next. You'll have to find Gumi in the Crimson Hirelands. And guess what? Despite what some people tried to tell me in my he swing and form ranking video, you don't need Basque Legion to get it. I'll throw it up on screen, but there is a way to use Wordeer to leap across the water and swim to the area where Gumi is. So it's still a relatively early encounter, and you don't just have to settle for Gumi either. There is an Alpha Sligu right around these Gumi. So while you probably won't be able to use a level 50 Pokemon in that moment, it is sort of a cheat code to get Gudra right away. It's got some insane stats from 150 special defense to 110 special attack and 100 in both physical attacks. This is a pseudo legendary if I've ever seen one, and its new steel dragon typing is so very good with just weaknesses to ground and fighting types it must worry about. Even then though, with the investment of proper EVs and whatnot, Gudra can take some major hits even from its weaknesses. Its moves are even nicer, so let's take a look at those. Gudra's got Iron Head, Dragon Pulse, Ice Beam, and Rock Slide. There are plenty of moves in the pool for Gudra that you could rotate out Ice Beam and Rock Slide for, like the Elemental Punches, Sludge Bomb, hell, even Water Pulse. Its Iron Head and Dragon Pulse both hit pretty well, since this thing is a mixed attacker. And for being stab moves, it doesn't get too much better. Then, with Ice Beam and Rock Slide, well, those two serve as coverage against miscellaneous Pokemon. While Ice Beam is able to handle the ground types that take aim at Gudra, it is unfortunately unable to pull anything out of its move pool for fighting types. Except maybe... Shelter. That's right, a defense-boosting move that makes Gudra harder to hit just might be its best response to fighting types. And one I'm willing to endorse if you're alright with not running a fully offensive oriented set in a playthrough. That's it for Gudra though. This awesome Hisuian form brings a ton of strength and next level utility, and it isn't even that hard to get or all that late. Alright, so next up, starting off our second half of the team, is a Pokemon that I couldn't imagine not using. You'll need Basculigen to get to it out on Ramanas Island. But it's worth the wait. The great and beloved Infernape is punching its way from modern Sinnoh to ancient Hisui and making another best team appearance. You can snag a really strong Alpha Infernape, or just catch a Chimchar and build that starter in your image. Either way, it's up to you. It brings much needed fire and fighting coverage, and there's not a lot of better Pokemon than it, quite frankly. Though I will say I really like Hisui and Arcanine as well. It's a harder Pokemon to get because you need the Firestone, but even then, I still think that Infernape is better. And um, if you're looking for firepower before then though, there is a pretty cool Ponyta you can get through a request in the early parts of the game that can fill the Fire Void. And um, it's a really cool coloration of it too. But how about them moves on our Monkey Pal? Let's take a look at them. We're going Ape here with Flamethrower, Close Combat, Thunder Punch, and Drain Punch. So why did I go two fighting type moves? Because it made me comfortable to have close combat as a big nuclear bomb sort of move that lowers defenses, while also using Drain Punch as a move that can be used more often in a longer battle. Plus, I mean, come on. Do you know how long I've waited to see Infernape get access to Drain Punch? It's been like my number one move to see it learn. It and close combat work as a team with Flamethrower being a superb fire type move and Thunder Punch provides needed water coverage just in case your Infernape finds itself needing to battle a strong water or flying type. There are other moves though it can use if maybe you're not entirely comfortable with two fighting type moves yourselves. Like for instance, Shadow Claw is a great coverage option for psychic types. 
and Stone Edge can take care of flying types as well. There is a few ways one could take Infernape, but I'm pretty happy with what I chose for it. Next up on the team, we've got Gardevoir, which I ended up deciding to use over Alakazam. Because boy howdy, Gardevoir has got that coverage, man. Despite the fact that Game Freak righted a long-standing wrong in giving Infernape access to Drain Punch, they still haven't pulled the trigger and given Alakazam Thunderbolt, which is honestly a big part of my decision making. It's really easy to get Alakazam early on, with Abra and Kadabra floating about in the Obsidian Highlands, so I'd suggest using it until you get to the Crimson Mirelands, where you'll get your hands on Ralts and begin the Crawl to Guardi. Its 125 base special attack and 115 special defense is definitely very good, and its move pull as you're about to see is loaded. I like being able to pull in Guardi on yet another best team, even if it is at the expense of the Great Alakazam. I can't ignore the quality of moves versus the power of Alakazam in this one though. The moves Gardevoir is using are Psychic, Moonblast, Thunderbolt, and Mystic Fire. Sorry, I mean Mystical Fire. Mystic Fire sounds cooler. There's that Thunderbolt I was talking about earlier. It's really worth using with the power behind Guardi. Psychic and Moonblast, of course, are a duo of great stab moves, and honestly, could be all you ever use with Guardi and you'd be in great shape. Mystical Fire is a last little bit of coverage that is amazing to see in this pool, as I always felt a fire type move was something Gardevoir was missing. There is so much in the move pool though for this Pokemon. We're talking Energy Ball, Ice Beam, and Shadow Ball. Yeah, it even gets Ice Beam now. If you want to set up Calm Mind, you're free to do that as well. There's a lot of great stuff in this pool, guys, and hopefully you guys understand why I went with Gardevoir over Alakazam at this point. So let's wrap up the team with our final member, the great and powerful Rhyperior. I had thought about a great defensive Pokemon here to match up alongside Gudra, and Rhyperior is perfect in that spot as a physically defensive partner to that specially defensive Gudra. Rhyperior rocks out with base 140 attack and 130 defense, and while it isn't speedy, it doesn't really have to be. Rhyhorn is available in the Crimson Mirelands like most of the team, so early enough into your adventure. If you want to use a rock type during the Obsidian Fieldlands portion of the game, there are a lot of Geodude rolling around that I could definitely suggest using until you've got Rhyhorn. You'll have to get a Protector one way or another to get Rhyperior. And of course, level 42 is when Rhyhorn evolves. But thankfully, it's such a good Pokemon in the grand scheme of things that waiting for Rhyperior to eventually come isn't a hassle. High horsepower? Stone Edge, Thunder Punch, and Shadow Claw are Rhyperior's moves. But trust me, this is by all means not the only moveset you could run. Just take a look at this pool up on screen. Everything from the Elemental Punches and Fangs to Iron Head and even Mega Horn and Outrage. There is no wrong way to put Rhyperior together, as long as you're including Stone Edge and High Horsepower so you can get the most out of its stab. The other two moves are your choice. That's what a lot of this best team has been, your choice when it comes to moves, because the way this team can be customized is just major. The defensive power of Rhyperior can't be understated, but neither can its incredible move pull. This could very well be the most important Pokemon on the team, depending on what you prioritize. I want to address one thing though before we move on, and I know this is going to be a trend in my comment section. I already feel it. What about Garchomp? I said it in BDSP, and I will say it again. By the time you get it, it is too late in game in my opinion. The evolution line can't be found until the Coronet Highlands, and to me, that's too late. I'm also aware of the Alpha Gabite you can catch that's level 56, so you would realistically have your Garchomp pretty quick if you did wait until the Coronet Highlands. I have to say though, a big thing that turns me off from Garchomp is its lack of a powerful ground type stab. It's lacking Earthquake, and Bulldoze is the best ground option it has. 60 base power on Garchomp is a sin, and it makes me a little upset that Bulldoze is the best it can get. Sure, it still gets Dragon Claw, but I think the majority of people use Garchomp because of its ground typing, and we already have a solid Dragon typing with Gudra anyway. Also, Garchomp's move pull pales in comparison to Rhyperior's. And hang on, I'm not done yet because now you're telling me you can get an Alpha Garchomp in the last area of the game. But at that point, is it really worth it? 
If you want to use Garchomp at the end of the day, that's your choice. It's still powerful nonetheless. So we've gone through the six Pokemon I've chosen to use mostly in this playthrough, while offering a few movesets for them. So what battles do you have to deal with? Well, I'll start by going through the nobles. The first one you have to deal with is Cleaver, and essentially your starter is all you'll need for this. Whether you have Dewat by this battle or not, the water type moves will help you chip away at Cleaver with ease and get it quelled before long. Then we move on to Lilligant. Well, that's gonna be easy as well. It's fighting grass type, so a flying type move will go a long way in hurting it and giving you the opportunity to bomb the hell out of it. If you'll run Aerial Ace on Dewat, it's just gonna be an easy go around. Speaking of things being easy, Samurott will help you take down Hisui and Arcanine in your next one too, as could Rhyhorn. Water ground type moves are what will do the work. Then Electrode, well that's where Infernape can cause major damage with its Fire Stab. Electrode can definitely do some damage with electric moves, but the Fire Ape will have nothing to worry about should Electrode call upon its grass moves. Finally, in your battle with Avalug, it's going to be done in by Infernape as well. But Rhyperior? Rose Raid and Samurott all can handle this thing as well, even if there are some threats from ice moves and whatnot. There are going to be some trainer battles you need to worry about too. The opposite gender character from yourself, Volo, and Mai are all very easy early battles that you can push your way through if you use a combo of Oshawott and perhaps a Shinx like I mentioned prior. The battle with Leon before dealing with Cleaver involves having to beat Gumi, which is going to be a little bit of a pain for the Oshawott slash Shinx conglomerate, but it's certainly possible. You've got battles scattered across Hisui with the Misfortune Sisters. And for the first one, you'll be able to pull out your Curlia to pull down Coin's Toxicroak. Not long later, you'll need to beat the three of them in succession, and Gardevoir can pretty much handle all these battles itself. Pull out Psychic, Mystical Fire, and Ice Beam, and it's all but over. Their Pokemon wouldn't even be able to handle the power. It'll pretty much just be these same Pokemon, so you'll know Gardevoir can always handle these bandits. Ingo is a fun one, and it's another battle Gardevoir can pretty much handle on its own. Ice and Psychic is all you'll really need to book your ride on the Subway of Victory. You'll have some run-ins with Adamin and Irida with their Ice Grass evolutions, which Gudra could take care of depending on your moveset lineup. It's really quite easy. Let's talk about where it actually is a little difficult though. The battle with Benny's team is Miss Magius, Sneasler, Gardevoir, and Gallade. A combined effort by Gardevoir and Samurott should be enough to handle him, which leads to a battle with Kamado. Infernape should be able to handle his Snorlax while Rose Raid takes out Clefable and Golem. That'll leave Samurott to deal with the Psychic type Braviary. After you get through that battle, you deal with Palkia and Dialga, and getting through them is definitely not as difficult as it might sound. Gardevoir or Infernape will do the job with fighting and fairy moves. So after that, you've beat the game. You can go do all the post-game stuff, and that leads to the single most difficult battle in this game. You'll end up fighting the, spoiler alert, actual villain of the game, the clear Cynthia ancestor, Volo. He pulls out an identical version of Cynthia's championship team, with the exception of Arcanine, which takes the place of Milotic, who isn't in the game. You'll want to turn to Gudra in this battle especially. Its great defenses and power will come through when you absolutely need to take hits. Togekiss gets dropped, Lucario can be taken out if you're feeling frisky, and Arcanine is easy to overcome. Then, for Rose Raid and Spirit Tomb, you can use Guardi. And for Garchomp, take your pick. Guardi or Gudra can handle it. You can use Rhyperior or Rose Raid too. It's all up to you with how you put your team together moveset-wise. Though, once you overcome Volo, you must defeat Giratina twice. And it is difficult. It might look simple enough to turn to Gudra or Gardevoir on this thing, but it'll hit you hard, and it'll take you out unless you're fully trained up values-wise. You're probably shrugging me off right now and furiously typing in the comments that you had no issues with Volo and Giratina, but save yourself the finger movements. Not everyone had an easy time, and plenty of people, after this video even goes up, will have a hard time still. That's it for the battles though. A handful of team members can handle the most important battles. I'd say Gardevoir is the MVP of the team, but Gudra could essentially do anything to anyone that it wants to, even if there's nothing super effective involved. 
I really like this team, and I enjoy the new take on this series I was able to do with this video. I'll probably do the alternate starters the same way, but let me know what you guys thought, and I'll try to take some critiques and fine tune things. That's it though, this has been the best team for Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's a whole new world we live in, but we still gotta catch them all, and win the important battles too. And don't worry folks, there's always going to be a best team to help us through things. Hey hey guys! Thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. It's exciting times for the Pokemon franchise, and I look forward to the coming months where it just keeps getting better. If you guys are wanting some more bite-sized Mystic Umbreon content, please check out my TikTok, where I upload daily, as well as the Mystic Umbreon Shorts channel. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I think it's time to wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrion, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.